TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 16th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early and send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the US indices that we track are trading to the downside. Dow's off 89 points, about a quarter of a percent. Less than a quarter percent for the S&P, six points. A quarter percent for the NASDAQ, 142 there. One and a half percent for the Russell. That's a 42-point move to the downside. Semis are up 10. You've got gold trading up 25 bucks, trading out at 1990. Silver's up 54 cents. That's a two and a quarter percent move there. 2408 is its print. Light to be crude. Um, well, it's trading down three bucks. Got to switch this over to the January contract. Give me a moment to do that. F24. We should be all set there. So now we got lights. We could sell three dollars, trading out at 7370. Natural gas off 11 cents. 307 is the print there. And the through treasury up three. Uh, one point and three ticks, 115.12. Now, let's do this. I was unable to, I just got back from an appointment uh, just in the nick of time. We uh, didn't do the uh, uh, the 11 a.m. update, but let's just get a quick overview here. Then we'll start taking a look at uh, charts, signals, things of that sort. But just our overview of our primary, our nine panel market update chart. So let's do this here. We'll take a look at the ES Mini. Right now, what we know about the ES Mini, just pulling back slightly out here, it's above all resistance levels, it wants to go higher. As far as where that higher price is at, let me, I'm just really trying to get all my charts up here on the screen right now. Where is that set of charts? Uh, daily equity futures. So it's gonna be a price target out here. Uh, the next upside price target that is for the ES Mini. It's at 45.66, 45.66. Got that spot volatility still well below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's always got a bullish indication for the buyers out there, unless the VIX is forming a bottom, and that we don't know just yet. But right now, it's below that level, that level being 16.52, the spot VIX at 14.16. We take a look at the NQ out here. Now, the NQ did run up into some resistance yesterday. It's not shown on this black background chart. You can note this figure on your pad of paper out there. It's up at the 15.98. 8250 level. 598250 was a 89 count breakdown area. Now what we can see here, and this has been going on and off since about four o'clock this morning with regard to a new profile that's attempting to form. I'm going to just try to refresh this screen right now, see if it pops back up. It's not popping back up, but it, it, I can I can guarantee you that the NQ is attempting to form a new profile. It's not present as we speak right now. Not a gigantic move, at, at, at least at this stage of the game out here. We'll take a look at what's going on with regard to the components that make up, or the top eight components that make up the NDX 100. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, it has, in essence, made its one-to-one -one A to B equals C. The one-to-one -one price projection would take us to 103.66. This got down yesterday to 103.81. So if we did get a bullish Universal candle. 
that would suggest a further move higher. Otherwise, because price is below profile support out there, we would expect price to continue to head lower. If we take a look at Goldilocks, gold is taking on the top of its daily profile. That number is 1989. If price can close above 1989, this next price target will become 2009. 2009.20 is its TD9 count breakdown level. If price is able to close above that, Although we won't have yet a guaranteed A to B equals CD to the upside, that would be its message. In order to get that A to B equals CD to the upside, you need to see a close above 2019.70. Now, in the case of silver, this is encouraging from a bullish standpoint. It, if it closes above 2392.23.925 to be exact out here today, one, it negates the CD nine count top. The second thing it would do is it would generate an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. Now, that A to B equals CD pattern would give us a price projection. This would just be the one to one, and it's going to be at matter on where where price closes today. But the one to one gets us a 24.95. It was a 0.618 retracement out there, so that may be the extent of the move. So watch 23.92 today. If we take a look at late sweet crude. Lights we crude as an A to B equals CD to the downside. Price is trading below trend line support out there. It's trading below the bottom of its profile. We'll try to figure out where lights we crude is headed during the traders during the rest of the show out here, not right this second. Natural gas is testing support, so it's been consolidating. It's got to buy the D point pattern that has led to a consolidation with inside its profiles. Profile support 304, profile resistance 328. We take a look at 30-year uh, treasury one more day trying to break out, which means closing above the top of a daily profile. You and I need to see two consecutive sessions. That would be two consecutive closes above 114.22. Now, if we get that, you could actually have an A to B equals CD to the upside inside the 30-year treasury out here. And see what that retracement looks like. So the A point, that's pretty easy to identify. The October 23rd low. Then it looks like, did this make a high of 115.12, 115.12? So we can use that high. And then the low down here, let me just see if that was at 112.12. This is at 112.12. All right, so we'll just use this one here. Oops, just got it close. So the one to one A to B equals CD with a price close above 115.38, quite frankly, would take us up into the 120.63 level. So that's just the overview. Normally we do that at the 11 o'clock hour out there. It was running late. I see we just got a few seconds before we're going to go to hard break so I can get the rest of my system set up out there. So this is Steve Rhodes with TFN, all the US indices traded to the downside. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. 877 927 6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to our first request out here. Uh, the first request coming in from G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. G-Man wants to take a look at Intel. So I'm trying to get my other charts here fired up. Um, I have some issue going on there, but we'll just simply overcome it. So we're going to use the black background charts right now. I believe Intel. Yeah. So if you take a look at Intel out here, you can see right now that it's trading above the top of its daily profile, well above that. Questionable whether we can put in an A to B equals CD pattern out there, but we'll, we'll try to take a look at that. Uh, it's trading above the top of its weekly profile. And so this would suggest that where price is running for is the uh, 4737 mark. We're trading at 4185 now. And that happens to be the top of the monthly profile. If I expand out, which we'll do here, we expand out the uh, Intel chart. Let's try to find an A to B equals CD pattern that we can put in here. So that we can do. So let me try to do this here, get rid of the one that's in there. What is going on with the system? There we go. Okay, so for an A point out here for Intel, we're going to come all the way back to the low. What the heck? This is so weird. Give me a moment here, folks. Sorry about that. Let's see here. Oh, man. So the A to B equals CD pattern. That should be okay. Let me just try offsetting this a little bit further. I don't know menu button size. Offset. Let's try to put this at 60. Okay, see if we can grab it now. So we're just trying to identify where the next price projection level is for Intel. There we go. So the A point is going to be the low of May 25th. The B point is going to be all the way up here at the high on September the 12th. Come on, work. Well, we know that's where the B point is going to be at. Why it's not grabbing or what the heck is going on with my system? What a shame. So what the heck? Hmm. That's a problem with going to the dentist so early in the morning. That's weird. I'm going to try it one more time, see if we get it in there. Uh, we're going to just say, screw that. Okay, so that's what we're going to say, screw that, because that's not working out. Let me see if we can figure this out. We're going to go to the white background charts now. So apology for the fumbling. But those of you that have been avid listeners of the show know that that's not the normal process. So it's just a technical difficulty, everything in life happening for us. So now let's go take a look at Intel's daily time frame chart out here. Good Lord. Okay. So what we can see here is there was a TD9 count top that formed on the trading day of November 8th, and that was uh, negated on November the 14th. So we know they've got a topping pattern that's negated. Here I can draw in the A to B equals CD pattern, or at least Steve is going to give it a shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw – oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. Maybe we're not going to do any A to B equals CD patterns today here, folks, um, for reasons that I can't tell you. That is really wild. Jeez Louise. Hmm. Okay, so I, I, I don't know what the issue is, but there is an issue out here. And uh, so right now what we know is we've got a price target at least of 40. There we go. So at least I've got this thing here 
working just a tad. So there's our A to B line. I'm just simply going to try to grab this and move this over to the C point out there. So it's at about right in that price range. So the one to one, just to see where we're at. My goodness gracious. Okay. So the one to one, A to B equals C D would take us up towards that 4505 ish area. So 45. So we'd say the next upside price target inside of Intel is between 45 and 47 out there. We don't see any kind of a topping signal. This is going to be day number three to the upside for Intel. If we take a look at the uh, weekly chart, no topping signals there. Now on a monthly chart, Intel will form bar number nine of a TD9 count this month. Uh, at the end of this month, I should say. Now, that doesn't necessarily identify the top because the top can come on the bar following bar number nine out there. I'd be more concerned about trying to identify a top on the weekly time frame that would then coincide with a, a weekly, t a monthly TD9 top. So right now, Intel looks like it wants to continue to move higher. I don't see any kind of a topping signal even on a 30-minute time frame chart. Let's pull a 30-minute chart out here. And this has a negated TD9 count top from today. Now, there is a bearish shooting star candle that formed. And that was at 1030 G man. So that is going to set up resistance. I'm assuming that this also will have formed a sell the D point pattern if I pull the chart back far enough. So just your resistance, at least for the next couple of days or today, at least intraday is going to be up at 4259. But otherwise, everything looks really good with regard to Intel. Sorry for that fumbling and bumbling. There's not too much Stevie can do about it. Other than just put up with it. And uh, unfortunately, you have to put up with it as well. So G man, hope that helps you out. We had another question coming from from GPH and GPH wants to take a look at the gold contract and specifically looking for the 30 minute time frame chart. So this is so wild. So what we're going to try to do here. What are we going to try to do? I don't think I'm going to try to set up all those. Ah, let's let's do it the right way. Let's put up gold. Let's get the December contract going. Let's see how long this actually takes here to populate. Make sure we're still on the white background screens. We are. OK. And what he's asking about he or she who uh, GPH is asking about where there's a TD9 count pattern or top that is on the 30 minute time frame chart. Now the 30 minute time frame chart hasn't populated just yet. The only thing that's populated is the daily time frame. You can see that the daily time frame chart has a uh, price traded above the top of that profile out there. That's the upper left. And so that price target is 2017.70. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. And if price closed below that, that would be a bullish outcome. All right, so they're starting to populate now. That's good. These are the intraday time periods. That's the bottom panel. And look at the bottom panel, the bottom chart that would be second from the left. Uh, the 60-minute time frame chart, I see a shooting star that's up, but I don't see any signals just yet. Come on, populate. Still calculating all this. That is wild. Hmm. Well, uh, I'll, I'll make sure we don't have this problem tomorrow if I'm able to do the show. So there's it's questionable whether I'll do the show, but I'm going to do my best to uh, try to uh, uh, find a way to get that comp. So on the 30 minute time frame chart, sorry about that, GPH, just took, you know, about uh, 20 minutes in order for that to calculate. The answer is no. There is no TD9 count top at all. There is an A to B equals CD pattern, though. And it's more than a one to one. And uh, it's a potential that you could get a bearish reversal candle in the next five and a half, next five minutes out there. If we do get that, that would be your signal of a short term top inside of gold. Now, if we do get that, that short term signal should then take us back to about the 1978 level. I'd say 1979.20, 1978.70, right in that range. If price pulls back, tests that area, rejects that area, that means close back above it, that would be a bullish outcome and suggest that the uh, gold continues to move higher today. But no TD9 count top as we speak, just the potential for an A to B equals CD pattern, but that needs a bearish reversal candle here in just about the next four minutes. Right now you've got a bearish shooting star, You've got a bearish engulfing candle, uh, but uh, we'll try to come back to that. With regard to the other time frames, though, just to see if there's anything to pay attention to, on a 10-minute time frame, you do have a TD9 count top. And price right now is dealing with that oscillator and change line. So a close below 1987.40 at 1130 would suggest a pullback to 1980 to 1983. Uh, that gets us back into the where gold on a 30-minute time frame chart is suggesting we could see a pullback to any other time frames that I see. Any tops? The answer is no. So just an intraday day period of time to be paying attention to that being said and it's not showing up here oh that's big you know why is oh, I, what i can see though is there is a resistance level now nah, that's support 
I'm not even going to go there. So the answer to your question, GPH, no. No uh, TD9 count top on the 30-minute, uh, but it looks like we are going to go ahead and get a, uh, a sell the D-point uh, pattern out there. So hope that helps you out. And thank goodness we're going to a break. I can try to uh, maybe shut these charts down, start it over, and see if we can be a little bit more efficient out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, eBay. This is for Dan wrote in, and uh, Dan, I didn't get to write down the question, but I did see you wanted eBay, so I'm just going to do a review of eBay for you, hopefully that that uh, takes care of what you were looking for. So we can see that eBay formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, and then that took price right up to resistance. Now, resistance here, Dan, is the top of its profile. 
41.49. That's yesterday's action price got up to 41.42. So close enough. We use that as a range, not right to the centilla necessarily. Sometimes it works to centilla, but we don't have to worry about that. So we know that price rejected resistance, and now it's trading below a first level of support. That first level of support, Dan, is the bottom of its profile. Now I don't know where price will close the day, but if it does close below 40.40, that would be the bottom of its profile. That would signal a move back to its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is presently printing at 39.32. If price were to close below 39.32 because it's red, that would tell us that price is likely going to go back and target its low. Now, that low was on November 8th. The volume on that loan, we're trading into that right now. The volume on that candle is 18 million shares. So far today, eBay has done 2 million shares. So it's coming back with light volume. But nonetheless, the first target to the downside appears to be 39.32-ish. That'll change by a penny or two. And then if price closes below that, even if it's on lighter volume, it still get down and test that low. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, that also tells the story of a nice bottom that may form. I say may because bar number eight formed. But in order for eBay to form a TD9 count bottom, it needs to close below. This is at the end of the week. This is not today, so that's tomorrow. Tomorrow is the end of the week, yep. Yeah. It needs to close below 4076. If it does that, you'll have a TD9 count bottom. But what you also see here is that red oscillator and change line really acted as a repellent zone, as resistance, 41.03. On the monthly time frame, price is trading below profile. So there's nothing bullish about the monthly. There's potentially a signal that's bullish on the weekly chart, although it really needs to get back above that red oscillator and change line. And price found resistance at the top of the profile out there. So on a 30-minute time frame, just to go to one short-term time frame chart out here for eBay, if we take a look at it, um, it doesn't show us much. It shows us pulling back into the gap. This is the gap that formed at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. This was yes, uh, two days ago out there. So I would say if price closes below that gap, that means the low of the session from 10 a.m., that low is at 39.53. That, too, would be signaling lower price and maybe pulling back to its breakout level, which was tested earlier, and that was at 38.60 out there. So 38.60 could be the downside price target, just looking at its 30-minute time frame chart, and that is for eBay. So, Dan, I hope that that did provide you with the information you were looking for. I'll try to look at that email during my break. If it didn't, um, you know, I'll try to get you that information. The next request, the, actually the only other request that I've got so far at this stage here is from Brent in Martinez, California. And Brent wanted to take a look at the Russell 2000. So the Russell 2000 down one and six tenths percent today, 29 points to the downside. Let's get over to those charts, try to get a feel for what it is communicating to you and I. So here, as we take a look at the uh, monthly time frame, the monthly time frame has got no bottom. Price remains below a oscillator and change line. It could be telling us that it wants to target 1425.80. If it's going to do that, price has got to close below the buy the D point pattern that formed on a weekly chart. That bottom is the low from October 27th, and that low is 1638.60. So not until that happens would we see or suggest that move back to 1425.80. On the daily time frame out here, what price did was it ran into resistance basically at its TD9 count breakdown level. Granted, it closed above it on uh, Wednesday. It closed above it again yesterday. Normally, that'd be the sign of a breakout, but that's not the message that it's giving us. So that is still resistance, Brent, that 1800.90 level out there. And if price closes below that, and we could see a, you know, a couple-day pullback here, what we should expect or anticipate is a pullback to about the 1722 level. 1722 on a daily time frame is the red oscillator and change line. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, what I want to do is expand this out. The 30-minute formed a road's momentum indicator top. Now there's an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. So on a short-term basis out here, and we'll just uh, draw and let's see how quickly this works. Oh, good. That's back to working. So here's your A to B line. Let's see if we just copy and paste. Oh, I'm just going to move it over to the C point. So here's the uh, C point. So you can see it's achieved on a 30 minute basis, that is. It's achieved the one to one price target level. So what you'd be watching for here, Brent, at least from an intraday standpoint, is a bullish reversal candle. If you were to get that, that would then signal a rally. And that rally should take you up towards a 1789 level on a 30 minute basis. That is its current oscillator and change line level. So now let's go back to the other charts out here with regard to you've got a TD9 count top on a five hour basis. So what this tells us, Brent, is this tells us that the key level of support for the five hour time frame is actually at 1772.80. The low so far has been 1772.60. So watch now this candle here doesn't close until 2 p.m. 
So, you know, it's kind of tough. But if price does close below that, that could be signaling an eventual move back to 1694. So back to the daily time frame, it's 1722 out there. I'd say that the bottom of that profile in the five hour time frame chart, again, let me give that to you one more time. Make sure everybody's got that. That is at 1772.80. If there's a close below that, it's a pretty decent signal that the Russell 2000 wants to pull back even further out here. Now, for some strange reason, I must have deleted something on this uh, chart. Um, let's do, let me see if I can do this here, see how quickly this will work. So new chart, chart here. I just want to see how many consecutive days, the upside, the downside, what's going on inside the Russell 2000. So if you give me just a moment, we should be able to pull that up, RTY, 1, 2, 23, and daily time frame. Let's go ahead to my little knee jerk reaction set of tools out here. There we go. So let's see, hopefully this populates very quick and I'll pull that out. Yeah, great. So I'm going to pull this over, just trying to understand its dance steps out here. So we've seen two consecutive moves to the upside. Consecutive moves, the upside or the downside, typically are two to three bars out there. And uh, the Russell 2000 not showing really much except, exception out here. We did get the two five-bar moves. Uh, last one, uh, The last one actually was on uh, November the 3rd. The one before that that preceded that was on October the uh, 10th out there. So you could get a two-day pullback. That would be common. Two to three day pullback, I'd say with uh, two out there. Um, so that's what it looks like when we take a look at the Russell 2000. So Brent, I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for as well. I also did not read in detail. I just saw it pop up on my screen. Again, I'll go take a look at that during the break and hopefully I provided you with the information you were looking for. In the next minute though, let's go take a look at the NQ and its intraday charts. Let's assume that I've still got that up here. We do. So here's the NQ. So what's the NQ doing? So five hour time frame chart for the NQ has got a TD9 count top. So its key level of support is going to be 15,751. If price were to close below 15,751, 15,541 becomes a price target. A Rosemont indicator top on the four hour time frame chart, its key level of support, which is basically being tested, is 15,800.75. It closed below that. At 2 p.m., this is again a four hour time frame chart, would signal move back to 15,478. On the two hour chart, TD9 count top, the key level of support is being tested as we speak right now. And that's at 15,822. Now, this candle closes at, t at uh, noon out there. So, a close below that is going to suggest a further retracement. That further retracement would say, I want to target the 15,552. So we got 15,552, 15,478, 15,541. But really the key area we're going to still stick with is at 15,751. That's still the bottom of the profile from that five-hour time frame chart. I think if that fails, that tells us that we should expect or anticipate, you know, at least a two-day pullback. And right here, the last rally that we had was two consecutive moves to the upside. We haven't seen two consecutive moves to the downside, not since October 26. That was a low inside the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So a uh, uh, question that Dan had on eBay as well was about the weekly chart. And the question was, is it going to form a T, you know, has it formed a TD9 count bottom? We sort of answered that. The only way it's going to form a TD9 count bottom is based upon tomorrow's close again, Dan. And that means that it needs to close below 4076. If it does, you've got a bottom. What you also know is you've got that significant resistance at that oscillator and change sign. And Brett uh, sold his uh, long position inside the Russell 2000 and is looking for a re-entry. So right now, Brett, we're going to go with that two day pullback that says you know let's take a look at it perhaps tomorrow if i'm able to do the show or on uh, monday uh, for sure so let's go to the next request that came in this is from dennis inside the tigers then dennis from west palm beach wants to take a look at apple so in the case of apple apple has a td9 count top now that td9 count top formed on the trading day of november 14th now the high of that is 188.11 Yesterday's close was below 188.11. Today we're trading above 188.11. So in other words, what Apple is about to do potentially is negate its TD9 count top. Again, it will accomplish that negation, if you will, with a close today above 188.11. So I know that, Dennis, you were asking about the short-term time frame charts. What you first need to, I think, focus on is the daily time frame chart to see what kind of signal it's going to generate for us. Now, there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, and that would suggest that this would then need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. Where price is targeting, we can see prices now, if we pull this back a little bit further, price is tested and so far rejected its TD9 count high from back on September 5th. Now, the swing point had volume of 45 million shares. So far today, in about two hours of trading, a little bit more than two hours of trading, 25 million. So 25 million so far, and that is going into 45 million. So Apple is pushing that swing point with volume, even though so far it has rejected that high, which is 189.98. Now, I don't know what volume is going to be at day's end, Dennis, but if this volume keeps up like that, even though it's rejected that level, that tells us that price will be back up there once again, 189.98. Now, the next price projected level, uh, this outside of the A to B equals CD pattern out here for Apple, would be all the way up at 195.18. And 195.18 is the next TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So Apple is 11% holding inside the NDX100. The NDX100 right now is off about 4 tenths percent or 66 points out there. If Apple is able to maintain this pattern, tells us that it's negating its TD9 count top, that sounds like a short-term positive and kind of adds the idea of maybe a two-day pullback out here inside of the markets, although Apple hasn't had any kind of two-day pullback, not a pullback at all. So right now we're going to go with 195.18, assuming that Apple negates that TD9 count top. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, 
weekly time frame chart basically shows just about a Gartley buy pattern. I say just about because price didn't make it all the way down to that uh, D point, that one to one area. But what we do know, regardless of whether it formed a Gartley buy pattern or not, price is above the top of its profile. Closed above it last week. The second close above it this week is bullish. You were trading above the top of, uh, of, of last week's high. That's also bullish. There's no profile resistance out here. The next level of resistance is really up at its all time high out here for Apple. And it's uh, the swing point that it's going into was the swing point from July 21st. There was 310 million shares. Now, we're only, you know, three and a half, three and a couple hours worth of trading, but 183 million shares versus 310. And yesterday, this did volume of 300. No. Oh, that's on a weekly basis. Sorry, I should go to the daily chart out here. So daily chart yesterday, 53 million shares. So if we have 53, we're at about 180. That gets us maybe somewhere around 240, let's say, or so, give or take. Yeah, so you're going to come in light volume no matter what. But if price is able to close inside that swing point, that's another thing to be looking for, Dennis. And to close inside there, you need to close above 191.23. If it can do that, that would be also another short-term positive. On the monthly chart, Apple is trading into its resistance zone. That's between 186.85 and 198.23. Now, you asked about the short-term time frame charts as well. So let's look at a 30-minute chart. A 30-minute chart for Apple shows a confirmed Rosemont indicator top. Now, the signal is somewhat neutralized. And the reason that, that is neutralized, Dennis, is because price is trading above the top of that profile. If it's only a counter trend move, that 30 minute profile, unless another one forms here, short of that, uh, because that was a bearish structured 30 minute profile, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, price should find support between 188.13 and 188.36 out there. So you do have a short-term top. That's on the 30-minute. We can change this. The asset and change line will not be correct, but I can change this to a 65-minute chart to see what that is doing, if there's any kind of signals. The 65-minute chart, and this bar here is going to complete at 1140. Already did complete. Um, this is, uh, I must have still a little bit of a delay here. That'd be a seven-minute delay. That's a heck of a delay. Um, this does show a Rhodes Mentum indicator top here. And it's also above profile, so its signal is somewhat neutralized as well. Let's try on a real short-term base. Let's try on a 15-minute chart, see what we have out here for Apple. And so for Apple, the 15-minute Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. So here's the key level of support. You and I found it, Dennis. And that is this uh, Rhodes Mentum, that is the TD9 count breakout level, 187.80. And yesterday at the close, that's where price pulled back to. And we can see that it gapped up off of uh, that. So we're going to make 187.80 on the short term time frame, your key level to be watching and observing for the rest of the day. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Apple. Let's see. Are there any other requests out here? I'll check the phones, phone lines. I don't see anything on the phone lines out there. So let's look at a couple other instruments out here. And I forget which ones. Let me open up the newsletter. Let's see if I can do that real quickly. I believe five of the top eight still had, well, that didn't work. Oh, I need to do this. Uh, daily newsletter. I'm just trying to see. I know I noted it inside the daily newsletter. Which of those in, uh, which of those, uh, maybe I didn't. I covered that. Mm. So I'd have to put up all, uh, no, nah, I didn't write it down. If I did, oh, uh, no. But let's take a look at some of the instruments inside of the semiconductor index out here. So AMD negated its uh, Intel wants further rally. Qualcomm. Let's take a look at Qualcomm. So QCOM. See if this has, uh, says, I believe that Qualcomm does not have a top out here. But let me see here. Let's see what today's activity is showing us out here. Yeah, so Qualcomm negated a TD9 count top. That still wants to move higher out there. And that's one of the top eight holdings inside the semiconductors. AMD um, I negated a TD9 count top yesterday. Let's just for the heck of it. Let's see what AMD is doing here this morning. We got these semis that are trading back out oh, just barely. Three tenths of a percent, just 12 points out here. So, you know, we're not going to see any kind of, I don't think we're going to see any kind of a top until we see a, uh, until we see the uh, semiconductors top out here. And that's not a signal that we're getting as we speak today out there. So what else can we uh, go take a look at? 
Um, let's go take a look at silver. Silver uh, is trading above the top of that profile. Let's get back to those shorter term time frame charts. Let's populate silver, uh, eight different uh, charts out here in December of 2023. Let's get a feel for what silver is doing. We know we asked about, yeah, we could take a look at uh, wheat uh, too. When we get back from this break here, Ryan, I'll get the, uh, I know you want to take a look at WAT. Do you know what the two active contracts are in that, uh, please? Um, but if we take a look at silver, you can see silver running into on a daily basis TD9 count breakdown resistance. So that is at the level of 23.925. If we close above that, that would be a bullish outcome for silver. Otherwise, resistance will have held. You don't know it. We got to know that if we're going to really analyze WEAT. There's no doubt about that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, the uh, uh, wheat contracts that make up WEAT. So if you do trade those uh, Tecrium uh, ETFs out there, uh, such as wheat, WEAT, you want to know what the holdings are. For example, the active contract for wheat is still December of 2023, but those are not the contracts that make up WEAT. And in fact, the contract holdings is about 35% for the March of 2024 contract. It's 30% holding for the May 2024 contract, and it's 35% holding for the December 24 contract. So those are the ones that you need to be paying attention to. I would kind of ignore WEAT, that chart, for any kind of signals. Instead, I would be taking a look at each of these three charts out here. Now, what they're each doing 
as they're each testing their prior swing point lows out here. So the March 2024 contract, that swing point low is down at 571.75. I don't think we've hit that today. We've gotten down to 575. So price, as long as price remains inside that swing point and below that red oscillator and change line, that's what it wants to do. I'm not saying that's going to form a bottom. I'm saying it wants to go test that low. In the case of the May 2024 contract, price has already tested that level. It's a, a September 29th swing point low, and that's down at 593. Now, we got down to a low today of 591.50. We've tested and we've, re we've rejected that, but it's also triggered a Rosebud to indicator signal. So what you're looking for here, Rye, at least on the May 2024 contract, is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. Now, you'd still have battles, you'd have profile battles, oscillator and change line battles and so forth, but that would be the bottom signal. In the case of December of 2024, the swing point is testing is September of 29, September 29th, that is. That low is 646. You are, you're trading below 646 today. So if you trade below 646, this tells us it wants lower price out there. Where are those lower prices at? That I don't know. I don't have a topping signal. There's probably there's an A to B equals CD to the downside, so I'd be looking for the next bullish reversal candle. So right now, stay away from WEAT and make sure you monitor the March, the May, and the December 2024 contracts if you're going to trade that vehicle. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'm going to do my best to be back here tomorrow at 11. If I can't, I'm going to try for 8 a.m. And uh, have a terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.